All right, normally I don't review a lot of uh, apps. Uh, I usually help people with Windows problems. But I was saw one the other day and I was so impressed I thought I'd uh, show you guys what it's all about. Uh, we're going to type in, in the store City Art, and there it is. It's the City Art Search app. And it's by Microsoft, as you can see. So we're going to go ahead and uh, look around here a little bit. It's the regular stuff, requirements, come screenshots here. They just released a new version with 9,000 art uh, pieces on it. And it's going to talk about all the different features it's got. It's also available on your PC and mobile. So let's go ahead and install it. So not to bore you with anything, uh, I'm going to skip some of the installation here so it gets uh, downloaded really fast. And we're going to go ahead and click on the launch button. Now, uh, I'll put in to start first. Now, if we launch this, okay, you're going to see uh, it's going to come up. And it shows you, ask you about your location. And I, you guys can not do it. That's not fine. It doesn't really do much uh, in this app. But I'm going to say, go ahead, do that. Do I want to update my lock screen? I'm not going to do that just yet. As a matter of fact, the first thing it does is bring up all your options. But again, I'm going to cover that. I'm going to show you what it does first. And then we'll go see how to configure it once you understand what it does. So your first screen here is your wherever you're at, in Europe or England or uh, United States, whatever. Okay. Uh, we're going to do a search. I'll give you some examples here on the left as well. You can try some categories. But we're just going to click up here where it says start typing to activate search. So if we click on that, you see on the right hand side, search box it comes up and says you can click on art, artist, gallery, city, etc. So I started with Van Gogh. Now, if you do a partial like this and you, uh, well, first of all, it shows you Van Gogh, shows you a museum, it shows you his painting sunflowers, uh, portrait, uh, self-portrait. Uh, anyways, same thing. If you hit click search now, no results. So it doesn't actually do it what you would normally do a search. Let's go back, do it again. But this time when we start the search here, uh, we're going to type something until they show up and then we're going to click on it for example Vincent van Gogh you'll see on the left hand side it brings up your top 30 results and they list them here by location the Kroller Museum the Van Gogh Museum uh, but it's only 30 and, that, and we'll talk about that in a minute too so if we look here at this museum it lists those items that are at that museum uh, same with the Van Gogh Museum, the location and the ones that are there. So you can go down here and see if there's anything you like to take a look at. But it lists these, but only a random, I guess, order of 30 of his works. So we know he's much more prolific than that. I assume that they have more. So we go to the upper right-hand corner. We click on 200 over there. And you can see it gave us 147 results for Van Gogh. That's probably all they have in this database. I'm not sure if that's how many he did. But you notice museum counts have changed now, and the list of items at each museum has expanded as well. In fact, if you start scrolling down this, it's sort of mind-boggling how prolific uh, he was uh, with these paintings over the years. And again, these are the ones that they have in their database. I'm not sure if there's any more. Uh, but let's go see what we can do. So using the scroll on my center mouse uh, button, I'm scrolling into my area. Uh, which uh, is in the LA area. And you see there's the J. Paul Getty Museum. If I click on it, it goes to there and it shows that there's a, uh, a Vincent Van Gogh uh, there, the irises. And if we look here, there's the uh, actual image. Conversely, if we click on the next one, which is uh, Norton Simon, and we click on that, there's a portrait of Van Gogh's mother. Uh, so uh, well, you can do this by location. If we can also click somewhere else, like the Starry Night, and we see that we jump over to the East Coast, and there's the Museum of Modern Art. So once you have a particular painting up, you can do several things. If you look here, there's a, a thumbnail of the painting itself, okay? And down below it, it, it has the uh, name of the author, okay? And the date he painted it. So in the museum and location, and then the Wikipedia image source. But we're just going to click on it first, uh, the image. And you see it zooms into, a, actually it brings up a, a box that uh, you can take a look at. You can also click on it and uh, zoom in and see it in more detail. If you click on it again, it returns to the, uh, the box. 
Now in the lower right here, there's some links down here. We're going to click on Wikipedia first. And you'll see it brings in two things. It brings the description of the artwork itself, uh, when he painted it. Um, and uh, you can go to the actual, we'll go to the website and check it out. But here's the artist. And it talks about uh, them. Now that's going to repeat on every single one of these. Uh, that's the same. But you get a description of the uh, painting itself. You can actually download a copy. Now I have Bing as my default browser, so it brings it up in the browser. I can right click, say save as picture, and save it somewhere on my hard drive. Uh, in case you want to do that. Uh, I, I'm not going to because you have everything you need right here. Live tile, we're going to set your live tile. So let's scroll over here to find the uh, pin. Oh, there it is. Um, and you can set it to whatever. Right now it's set to a different one. Uh, but you can set it directly by clicking on that link uh, right by the uh, image. So I'm going to do that real quick uh, and uh, take a look at it and watch it. Boom, it changes over to the uh, irises. Okay, uh, and it gives you a little bit of piece of information. But let's go back uh, here to the uh, actual application. The last thing we have down here is the favorites. And you can click on it and it adds to your favorite list, which we'll talk about in options a little bit later. So let's, cl uh, let's go. Oh, yeah. Down here, there's, it tells you what the approximate size was in relationship to a, a human being, depending upon your definition of a human being. But you'll see as we go through here, different paintings are shown as different sizes. In fact, to demonstrate that, let's, uh, let's go to two cut sunflowers here. We're going to click on it, and you'll see uh, there's the image. Uh, and all the same stuff, but there, see how much smaller the image is there uh, in relationship to the person. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on the favorites over here at the bottom to add uh, so I can show you favorites. Let's click on close that, and you'll notice that up here there's a star up here, and you click on it, it says show my favorites. You click on it, and I had some other ones already in here, but it had added those to my favorites list, and we'll see how we can use that uh, a little bit later as well, just having something to, to view it. I'll view your favorites easily. By the way, uh, just to be thorough, if there's something on your favorites list you don't want to see anymore, you click on it, go to its tile, bring it up, click on that, and it's now asking you to remove it. You say yes, and it's no longer listed over here in your favorites. But that sort of leads us into uh, my next thing, and that is how all those options can be used. As you got a glimpse earlier, there's a whole slew of uh, options here, and they're a little convoluted, so let's take them one by one. First of all, the obvious one. Show the artwork on the lock screen. So if we look now at my lock screen, let me go ahead and oops, let me go up here and lock it. You'll see my lock screen has a generic picture on it. But if we go back here and we turn on lock screen on, and we go back here and we say lock, and we see a starry night now because that was the last one I had selected for it. And we'll get back to some more of the configurations about the lock screen here in a minute. But uh, next on the list down here is the live tile. Show that information on the, that's the text on there. Uh, and then live tile history shows older image on live tile stack. In other words, uh, it'll recycle those. And uh, also if you cl click on settings here, it'll bring up settings. And if you look down here, uh, it says which I have to show detail status. Okay, I can change that to city art search. Uh, and I also can put in quick status, by the way. So now with that setting uh, set, okay, uh, quick status isn't that big of a deal. But anyways, let's go take a look at my um, start screen. So let's go back here, and you'll see that w once I log uh, or lock, you'll see now besides just the image, we see... Boom, the text, Starry Night, painted in 1889 down here, and where it's located at. And that's actually a little helpful if you see an image comes up in the, all the images that you have set up. Uh, you'll know where to go if you want to get more information about one that intrigues you. Now we're back here. Let's go back to the settings again and finish up on that. Uh, you can have random uh, or your favorites, okay, or, or whatever search results you had. You can also have a nudity filter in case you're easily offended because a lot of the older artworks have some nudity in them. Same with religious as well. You can turn that on. You can eliminate portraits. And you can turn on nearby so that it will show you everything that's in your area. It's important because uh, you could be traveling when you're watching this because we're going to talk about it being available for mobile here. Uh, then we can see the refresh image of how often you want to get a new one. 
you can even get a toast notification about when you're when it's nearby. So not only will they show up, but they'll actually tell you uh, over here uh, that you're getting a uh, hey, you're in uh, Paris, and here's where some of these are at. Okay, not a woohoo moment, but at least it's got, it got some uh, nice names. Uh, and there's the notifications. Now you can clear your favorites just by uh, simply clicking on the clear button. Now I'm going to leave my favorites on there. I'm not going to clear them uh, for now. But let's go back to the, the um, search here. And instead of doing it by an artist, let's, uh, let's do it by a type of painting. Now here's Impressionism. Now you can see on the, on the left, we now have a uh, different painting by different artists, but in the, the same style. Uh, so we can go there's Monet, uh, other people as well. Uh, and let's, uh, let's go ahead and click on uh, one of them. Uh, let's do this one here. And it tells you, there it is, we click on it. And if we go down now to uh, WikiArt and click on it, you'll see that it tells it. It's an, by an Impressionist artist, Claude Monet. And 18 works he did in one winter, it looks like. <laughs> so anyway, it gives you some information there. And you can search by... Uh, the type of uh, artist or type of painting. So let's say you are traveling and you want to find the local stuff in your area. Well, you can uh, scroll in and out and do all that stuff to try and find it. But you can also search by, uh, let's say, a me uh, name and see a list of the places it's at. Uh, so you don't have to do all the scrolling about and all that. But if you know the name of the country you're in, <laughs> or the actually the museum is nearby, uh, you do what you did with the uh, the person. Uh, I, I, I type in, let's say, Getty here, uh, and I find the Getty Via. Okay, and I can click on that or the Getty Museum, either one. Okay, and zoom, it zooms in right there. Uh, and it has uh, what they have there. Now, you notice it's not just uh, Vincent now. It's unknown artists of different things there. Uh, let's... Uh, Let's search at Getty again, but let's go to the J. Paul, which is a bigger museum and has tons of things, and there's all sorts of different artists and all that. Uh, and you can see what's, what's listed there. So location is uh, a good uh, thing to search by. Uh, by the way, you have your history over here on the right of all your searches, so you can just click on that uh, below here. And for example, I click on Van Gogh. Again, I'm back at all the Van Goghs and you can find which ones you want and where they're located at. Uh, by the way, let me scroll down here. There are some that they don't know where they're at. If we scroll down to Pease, I think. Uh, let's see, Hermitage. Uh, uh, it's in here somewhere, but there's a private collection, and they just really don't know where uh, they're at. Um, I tried typing in private in search, but it didn't work. So I'm just trying to, oh, there it is, private collection. And it won't give you a map marker. But here's a list of all of Van Gogh's uh, paintings that are in a private collection somewhere, location unknown. You can still look at them, okay? You just don't know where the hell they're at. Uh, so, uh, again, read about them, do what you want. But uh, there's some of the probably very, or less known works because they are uh, gone uh, into a private collection that can't be viewed, except here. What happens if you don't want to have it viewed anymore? You don't want to see this on your lock screen anymore. Well, you can come over here, uh, as usual. Let me go back here. And you see that it has Starry Night here. Uh, so how, how do we get rid of this? We can use the controls in the app. So let's go over here to that again. And click on here and come down here. And simply turn off the stuff uh, and all that. But it's really... Uh, easier to click on settings here or go to the app yourself and go back and pick one of your other pictures. Right now it's got Starry Night on it. Uh, I'm going to go back to what I had as default. Just change it here. It's a lot simpler, a lot easier. Um, and make sure you do that for your other settings as well. So now if I exit this, uh, let me go back one more time. I click over here, say lock, and you'll see I'm back to my normal uh, image or my uh, lock screen. 
So you thought you were done. Well, so did I. But they released another utility that you can use along with this. So we're going to go to the store. It's going to control not only your, your lock screen, but your desktop. Uh, you can use it on an Xbox. Uh, let's go take a look. So in order to do that, we're going to go here. Uh, and you have wallpaper. Check it out. So, yep, I'm going to do that. So go over here. To find it, you should type in CAS Preview. And then, of course, install it. Okay, so we go through the obligatory downloading and install here. But uh, you see all different types. It's on Xbox One, PC, Mobile, uh, HoloLens, and all that. So it gets ready. There it is. It says it's ready. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and launch it. And it's going to want to access my location. Sure. So here's the entire interface right here. Now, as you can see here, the interface is a little funny, but it's got a couple lines that go to this button that says match. So it makes whatever you set for your lock screen now work for your wallpaper. Now, the interface here is a little crazy, but now you can have the live tile follow either your lock screen or your wallpaper. Since we've already synced it, it'll do, be the same as both of those. We also have the same filters, uh, but let's take a look at the slideshow. And you'll see the first thing that comes up is a picture and the description of the contents and that in the slideshow. So now that we have them synced, I'm going to go back to the uh, uh, other application. I'm going to go back to uh, the actual CD art search. I'm going to turn on the lock screen here. Okay, so now the lock screen, the live tile, and now your backgrounds are all linked together here. So now if I click refresh, watch my background. The background turns into the same thing, the first image that we had talked about. Uh, it's now my desktop background. It's now my lock screen background. Uh, let's, take, let's go take a look at that. There it is there. Now again, to go over it again, let's go back to the app. And again, because I have all three of these synced, everything's going to show the exact same thing. The live tile, um, the lock screen, and your background. So you can see this art wherever you want. So again, we can change the timers to be a different timer for those. But now that they're in sync, they're going to show the same item. So if I hit refresh, and boom, uh, it refreshes the lock screen, the background, and the live tile. And just for good measure, let's go ahead and refresh it one more time. Wallpaper, lock screen, and live tile. And there we have it. Uh, you get to see the uh, image itself is on my desktop. Okay, so that's basically it. Uh, let me go back for a second. Oh, by the way, if you want to, once one's selected, you can uh, go into here. Let's see. Oh, yeah, here in Info. And there it is exactly what it was. And you can tell it to blacklist it here. Let's say it's new to you. You don't want this blacklist or you don't like it. Blacklist it from the uh, app, from the slideshow. So once you, uh, let me go back to that. Uh, where was I? Oh, info. Uh, add the blacklist as well. I don't like uh, this young couple. <laughs> so I go up. There it is. It won't show up on anything. Okay. So I refresh now. And it goes to the next one. So now I have uh, a very patriotic but busy background here uh, on my desktop. But there you have it. Whether you, you want to use City Art Search just to look around uh, at uh, some uh, masterpieces, or if you want to have it on your desktop and lock screen, it's only a click away. Okay, just when you thought you were done, there's one more the CAS Preview app. Not the full app, but the preview app is available for Xbox. So if you download it and then go to all those settings to coordinate everything, guess what? You can have these masterpieces on your Xbox. Maybe a little bit of an oxymoron gaming and masterpieces, but enjoy. Hey, and don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. I've got a lot of stuff coming up. Uh, uh, don't forget to like this video. And don't forget to follow me on Old Guy Geek on Facebook and Old Guy Geek on Twitter.